Hey guys, what's up? So welcome back. In this video, we want to actually look at for loops. And for loops are an important concept in Python. You can actually loop over stuff um, like lists, um, which we saw in one of the previous videos. And in addition to lists, you can actually loop through a string. So a string is just a set of characters. So if we said my string equals this is a, a string. So it's a set of individual characters this is a character, this is a character. So those are all characters in here. So if I were to actually say how many characters are in my string, I can actually say four, and then I'll just say character, C-H-A-R, which is short for character, in my string, and I do a colon, and then once again, you have to do the indentation because we're doing Python. And then here I can say print character. So it's gonna loop through every character in the string and it's going to print it, and we're gonna go ahead and run this. And we look at the uh, debug console in our window below. It's taking a while actually, I don't know why. There it goes. You can see that it actually went through the entire string and it printed off a character one line at a time, each individual character, including the, the actual spaces, the white spaces here. So those are also characters within a string. So you can break a so a string is very similar to a list in that you can actually reference characters of a string by using the index and the index once again you pass in a number to the this square bracket you can say print me off the fourth character and remember it starts counting at zero so it's actually going to be the fifth character so this is let's see t is one two three four five so it's actually going to be a space if we do four so we're going to do five so it'll print off the a character which is actually the sixth character in this string. So let's do that. And you can see it prints off A. Now, <clears throat> the reason why this is significant is because sometimes you're like, okay, I need to see if this string has the character I in it. You know what I mean? So this has the character I twice. Let's go with N because there's only one N. You could also go with G because there's only one N. But I could say four character and this actually doesn't have to be character this could be x it could be y it could be whatever whatever you want because this is a temporary variable variable that's being populated just while we're going through the loop so i'll, I'll say in uh, my string and i'm going to actually put a breakpoint here so you guys can see that whatever you want gets changed as we loop through the string and we're going to say if and we looked at if statements we're going to say if um and there's no brackets there that's me using other languages i'm going to say if whatever you want equals and once again we're not doing a single equal we got to do two equals because we're comparing it and we're going to say g so we'll just go with g and we're going to be like print holy crap it's a g all right, so now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that we're in this, this loop. So the first character, whatever you want, is assigned the value t. We know that t does not equal g, so it's going to continue to go through its loop. So if I press the play and I come back here, now we're at h. And you can see that's not going to match. And I'm going to keep doing this for a while because g is at the end. So we're at i now. It looks like we're at n now. And now the next one, it's going to be at g. So whatever you want equals g. So now we're going to go to the print statement. Print, holy crap, it's a g. And we're going to see this at the console at the bottom. Holy crap, it's a g. And that's why you would want to do a for loop with a string because you might be looking for individual characters. Now, sometimes you could even build your own HTML scraping that, that looks for greater than and less than signs to figure out when you're inside of an actual HTML element and when you're inside the, the text that is between an HTML element. So that is why you would want that granular, which means very drilled down control over your, um, you know, your string. So in addition to this, though, you could also do the same thing with a list. So like we saw my list equals, in fact, we'll go with a better name, we'll say fruits equals banana, apple, pear. And now I can loop through every element in the fruit and I could say for f, because remember this can be whatever you want, it's just a temporary variable, in 
fruits prints f. So this is going to loop through every one of them and say uh, it'll print every single uh, fruit down here to the thing. So I can even do a string concatenation to it where I could say I like to eat plus and make sure you have your space here that way the fruit won't be pasted right after the T and we'll say I like to eat banana, I like to eat pear, apple, I like to eat pear. So you know that this is why you would want to loop through and once again I, I said if you built like a scraping program where you had a bunch of different websites that you needed to scrape this list could be a bunch of websites and as you go through each item you're gonna then fire off some you know huge section of code that actually is going to then do whatever it is you need to do but lists and for looping over lists and strings are very important all right now here's another concept that I want to explain to you guys if we were to say for f in fruits if uh, I keep doing the parentheses there if f equals banana print I like bananas all right, so if f equals banana, this statement is going to display. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here at the if, and we're going to press play. Now we're at f, and we know f equals banana, so it's going to go ahead and print. Now what if you were like, you know, now f is equal to the next item in the list, and it's apple. But what if you reached banana and you said, I don't want to evaluate the rest of the items in the list, because if you have like a million items in the list and you already found what you're looking for, you just want the program to return without continuing to run. And that's actually where we're going to use something called the break statement. And we just have to say break right here underneath our statement. And if, if banana equals, or if F equals banana, it's going to break out. So it's not going to evaluate the rest of these items. And that's, like I said, helpful if you have a lot of items and you don't need to actually go through all of them. So f equals banana, and this equates, and we're going to print the statement, and then we're going to break, and you can see that none of the items get evaluated anymore. So that's why we need the break statement within, uh, within Python. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. This is how we do for loops in Python and also break out of the for loops if we feel like we need to at any particular point. And we've seen that we can loop over lists and also string characters. So let me know what you guys think. Please subscribe. Please share this video. And I appreciate all the support. You guys have a good day. Take care. Bye. Hey, guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.